بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. Started the season of winter, and the righteous predecessors regarding their ibadah and worshiping Allah subhanahu wa taala, they used to make the best use of this time, especially. The daylight changing, the timing changing for this week end, insha'Allah. So we need to remind ourselves of some of the blessings of the winter time. And how can a believer make the best use of it? And how could we make up what we missed during the days of the year? During this time, insha'Allah ta'ala. As a fact, the believer takes lessons from everything happening around him. And every reminder reminds him with something related to the Akhirah. The cold weather reminds him with the Akhirah. The hot weather reminds him with the Akhirah. The fall of the leaves of the tree reminds him with the end of the life. If the heart of a believer is open for thinking and reflecting, it will keep reminding itself from every event, everything happening around it. So we'll be sharing inshallah in this khutbah some of the rulings that we need to learn during the cold weather, during the storm, during the wind, during the rain, some of the dua, how the righteous predecessors used to say or how they used to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during these times. As you know, the rains and the winds, it could be mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes. And some other times could be a punishment. So we ask for the mercy and seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the punishment. And all of us heard about lots of hurricanes, tornadoes and stuff, and nobody could be saved except the one whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects. From the fiqh of the time, to know the blessings of wudu in such a cold weather, which is called in the sunnah, isbaagh al-wudu'i ala al-makarih, to place water while you on your on your skin while you don't like it you know what's the merit of doing that and nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallama said in the hadith ala adullukum ala ma yamhu allah bihi al khataya should i tell you about an act with which allah erases the sins wa yarfa'u bihi al darajat and promotes your ranks Increase your hasanat. Isbaagh al-wudu'i ala al-makarih. To do the wudu in a time that you don't like it. You couldn't endure it. Wa kathratu al-khuta ila al-masajid. Walking a lot to the masjids. Wa antidharu al-salati ba'da al-salah. And waiting for salah after another salah. Fadhalikum al-ribat, fadhalikum al-ribat. This is the ribat guarding in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine the blessings when you have all of the sins erased. When you do something, your soul do not like it, doesn't like it. And you try it by yourself. In the time you are so tired and you want to sleep, you want diarily, you need some rest. Some rest. Then, Try to do what Allah likes. Give the preference to what Allah likes more than what your soul, what your nafs, ego likes. To do what Allah likes over what your body likes or wants. And look at the peace of mind that Allah will place in your heart after that. And try to struggle against yourself. And this is the nature of the believer. 
The believer lives his life struggling against what he wants, what he likes. Every single soul loves rest, loves sleeping, loves the breaks. But the heart of the believer will not let him sluggish, will not let him keep lazy like this. The heart of the believer keeps motivating him to do the righteous deeds, to struggle against what I want. All the personal, all the soul desires, if you act in the way that it doesn't like, you will be saving yourself. In Ramadan, we fast. We deprive ourselves from what we like, which is food and drink. In the Sadaqat, we give the thing that we like most from our wealth. And this is the way you defeat yourself. You defeat your desires. And in the winter time, one of the things that would help you to defeat the desires when you struggle against yourself to wake up for Salatul Fajr. And Alhamdulillah, we have bigger chance these days. In the summertime, lots of us have struggled by sleeping like two, three, four hours and they had to wake for Salatul Fajr. In the winter time, you can make up what you missed during the summertime. Many of us didn't pray Fajr in the Masjid. This time you sleep after Aisha. If you count the timing from Aisha from 8 to the time of Fajr, the time of Fajr, which is 6.30 now, and the time of Aisha, 7.30 or from 8, that's, you have more than enough time to sleep. And more enough time to pray during the night time. You see? And this is the way the righteous predecessors used to use the long nights during the winter time to pray and seek knowledge and read and use the daytime to fast as we'll know during the khutbah inshallah ta'ala. But make the best use of it. Try to make up what you missed. For those brothers who didn't pray Isha on Jama'ah, now Isha is early. Unlike before when we prayed Isha at 11 or 11.20 or even 30. So we have the chance to multiply the rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says, whoever prays Isha and Fajr in Jama'ah, it counts for him like the one who established the prayers all over the night, the entire night. So this is a great chance for every believer to do that during this time. To do the wudu. From the fiqh, we need to remind ourselves in the winter time, the fiqh of wiping over the socks. And there are conditions to wipe over the socks, you should have placed it or put it on while you are in a state of wudu. To put on your socks, whether the leather one or the leg or the fabric one. And you have the right to wipe of it wipe over it for 24 hours and wiping on the socks is very simple you don't have to wipe the entire foot from up and down just like this if this is the foot just like this once once on the top of your foot you don't have some people do some mistakes and they keep wiping here and there and like we do no wiping over the socks is different after you finish wudu and you already had your socks covering the ankles, then you just do it once, once. For 24 hours if you are not traveling. But if you are traveling, you have the right to make it for three days and three nights. And this is the way the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There are some conditions mentioned in the books of fiqh regarding the socks you wipe on, but many of them do not have strong dalil for that. So wipe over the socks if you have it as long as it covers and there is no problem with that, so wipe over it. The same thing applies to the hat or the turban if you have in your head. And for the sisters, those who have khimar and she couldn't take it off, 
she's working or so she can wipe over it as well. As mentioned, some of the wives of the Prophet used to wipe over it. And regarding the khimar, it doesn't have to be put on while she's in the state of tahara like the socks. There's a difference here. Same thing applies to your hat. If you want to wipe on it, you can. Because it's al imama as there is narrations, or there are some narrations, the Prophet ﷺ wiped over it. But the wrong thing that many people do, or some sisters do, they think, as long as I was able to wipe over the socks, wiping over the khimar or the hat, she thinks she can wipe over the sleeve. This is wrong. This should be washed. No wiping over the sleeves. To make it clear for everyone. Now, some other rulings. In case of heavy rains, or heavy snow, or heavy strong cold, we have the right to pray at homes, even if it is Duma. Abdullah ibn Abbas, in a very uh, snowy or, or, or raining day, he asked people to pray at their homes, saying that the Jum'ah is obligatory, but I don't want to make it hard for the Ummah. And he learned that from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Whenever there was so cold night or raining, he used to call, ask the Mu'azzin, after saying, Hayya ala salah, hayya ala falah, to say, Sallu fi rihalikum. After saying it's the shahada, to say, Sallu fi rihalikum, pray at your homes. Can we do that? Yes, this is an excuse. And just if there's hardship to come to the masjid. If the rain is heavy and you can come to the masjid, there is another ruling we need to learn. Combining the prayers. In the time of rain, one of the fiqh of the winter we need to remind ourselves with. Combining the prayers to pray dhuhr with asr. At the time of Dhuhr or the time of Asr. Usually we do it at the time of Dhuhr. Maghrib with Isha. At the time of Maghrib or the time of Isha. Both are correct, but usually we do it at the time of Maghrib. But remember, when you combine the prayers here, you are not traveler. You cannot shorten the prayer. No. Just to combine four rak'ahs with four rak'ahs. Four and Asr. And for Maghrib, to combine three rak'ahs Maghrib with four rak'ahs Aisha. This is very important ruling as well. Now, and the dalil regarding cancelling the salah when there is a rain, Abdullah ibn Abbas in a rainy day, he used to tell the Mu'addin, when you say, Ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah don't say hayya ala salah, but say, sallu fi rihalikum, pray at your homes. And even, even if it's Jum'ah, we can do the same. Because we don't want to make it hard for the people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made this religion easy for us. And made practicing the acts of worship easy for us. لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها Allah doesn't burden anyone except what they can do. So we talked about this and there is another issue regarding combi combining prayers. Some people, they said, you can combine Dhuhr with Asr, but Jum'ah with Asr. This is a disputable issue among the scholars, but the selected opinion here, we can combine even Jum'ah with Asr. Even if it's Jum'ah with Asr, if it's raining or very cold weather or stormy day, you can do that. Another ruling relates to us if we are riding cars and this is the time of prayer what should we do heavy rains i couldn't leave my car to pray outside or i'm on the highway i i could there is no way and if i don't make it the time of salah will pass if there is the state of necessity and there is no way this is the only excuse to pray in the car because usually the farida is not to be observed on the car. The farida, the obligatory prayer, is not to be observed. If you can combine the prayer with another prayer, you can. But if it's like Salatul Fajr, 
doesn't combine with, uh, with another prayer and if you delay it, the shuruq will come. This is the only way you can make it. The same like the one who is sick and he couldn't move from the bed at the hospital. This person, if, he, if someone can bring him some dust to make tayammum, he can. If there is no way to make tayammum, pray on the time the way you are at. But he couldn't move, he couldn't stand, he couldn't do anything. On the position you are at just to pray. And the dalil, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. This is all what you can do. So do not burden yourself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not burden you something over your ability. So this is the fiqh of praying on the right. But praying on the night on the right in your car. Regarding the sunnah. If you want to pray like Sunnah al Fajr, Sunnah al Dhuhr, Sunnah al Maghrib, Sunnah al Isha, and you want to pray it on your car, can you do it? Yes. Because Salat is Sunnah, you can observe it anytime on your right. Even if you are able to stand, you can pray it while you are sitting. And the Prophet وسلم, prayed on his right in the camps. So you can do it. Regarding Salat al Subh, Salat al Dhuhr, al Asri, or whatever Salat, you can do the Sunnah on the right. Also, from the fiqh, to learn some of the dua that we need to know during the winter time. Like the dua when there is a storm or wind. The Prophet taught us this dua to say, Allahumma inni as'aluka khayraha. وخير ما فيها وخير ما أرسلت به وأعوذ بك من شرها وشر ما فيها وشر ما أرسلت به والله I ask you for the goodness of this wind and the goodness in it and the goodness it was sent with and I seek protection with you I seek refuge with you from its evil and the evil in it and the evil it is sent with this is the dua to protect yourself from the evil. Some people would be worried there are some trees next to their house could fall on them at a time. Say the dua of protection. Say the dua of protection. And there is another dua. Our scholars called it the dua of protection, literally. And we talked about this dua in Salat al Fajr a couple of days ago. This dua narrated by Abdullah ibn Umar saying, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never forgot this dua. Never forgot this dua in the morning and the evening. What's this dua? Open your heart before your ear and listen to this dua. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma inni as'aluka al-afwa wal-afiyah. في الدنيا والآخرة اللهم إني أسألك العفو والعافية في ديني ودنياي وأهلي ومالي اللهم استر عوراتي وآمن روعاتي اللهم احفظني من بين يدي ومن خلفي وعن يميني وعن شمالي ومن فوقي وأعوذ بك أن أغتال من تحتي What's this dua? The dua of protection reads Oh Allah, I ask you for love, forgiveness, well, afia, protection in my dunya and the akhirah, in this world and the, and the hereafter. Oh Allah, I ask you for al-af, wal Al-af, forgiveness, wal protection. Fi dini, in my religion. Wa dunyaya, my life. Wa ahli, my family. Wa mali, my wealth. Allahumma astur awrati wa amin rawaati. Oh Allah, cover my defects, conceal my defects. And secure my, myself, secure me against any scaring or any fear. Allahumma hafazni, oh Allah protect me from front and from behind. From my left side, from my right side and from my left side. From the top of me and from beneath me. Protect me from attacking from beneath me. This is beautiful dua. And many people... They keep using this dua day and night to follow the sunnah of the Prophet So this is the dua of the storm. We just mentioned Allahumma inni asal khayraha wa khayra ma fiha khayri ma ursilat bih wa'udhu bika min sharriha wa sharri ma fiha wa sharri ma ursilat bih. 
There is also another dua when you see the rain. They say, oh Allah, make it beneficial raining. That means do not make it harmful for us. Do not make it harmful for us. Allahumma sayban nafi'a as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to make dua. When you see the thunder, some of the righteous predecessors used to say, وَيُسَبِّحُ الرَّعَدُ بِحَمْدِهِ The thunder gives a tasbih to him. This is a verse of the Quran. وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ مِنْ خِيفَتِهِ And the angels glorify him out of fear. So remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whenever you see something, either to say the takbir or tahleel, those are al-baqiyatu al-salihat, the remaining beautiful words. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illa Allah, wallahu akbar, wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah, aqulu ma tasma'una wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fastaghfiru. Alhamdulillah, wa kafa wa salamun ala ibadihi al-lazhin astafa thumma amma ba'd. As we mentioned earlier, the righteous predecessors used to wait for the winter time. Abu Ibn Mas'ud, he narrated in the hadith on the authority of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, The easy gain is fasting during the winter time. Why it's easy? The daytime is too short. The day time is too short. You can fast it easily. And even you will not feel thirst during the daytime because of the cold weather by nature. Fasting all the time is blessed, is blessings. Fasting is a blessed act. Whoever fasts one day for the sake of Allah, Allah will keep him away from the fire for 60 years distance, for 70 years distance. Can you imagine for one single day of fasting? So you have the choice to fast every other day, which is the best. And this is the fasting of Dawood alayhi salam. Or fasting Thursday and Mondays, which is the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Or three days from each month, preferably to be like the 13, 14, and 15 of each lunar month. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, whoever fasts three days from each month, it counts for him like fasting the entire year. How is this? Because each day will be multiplied by 10. Three times 10, 30, which is the month. And when you do that every month, it comes for you the entire year. So you have the chance to do this great sunnah during the winter time. And who knows, it may take you to the summer time. Because it, the day becomes longer gradually. And it would be good training for yourself. To be one of those people who will be admitted from the gate of a rayyan. Because you admitted fasting, voluntary fasting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember, whatever voluntary good deed you are doing for the sake of Allah, it brings you closer to Allah. You will be beloved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Selected to be amongst the elite. As the Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith that Allah says in the Qudsi hadith, وَلَا يَزَالُ عَبْدِي يَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَيَّ بِالنَّوَافِلِ حَتَّى أُحِبَّهِ My servant will keep getting closer to me with doing voluntary deeds until I love him. So the more voluntary deeds you'll be adding, the more you're getting closer and being beloved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves his servant, angels will love him, Jibreel alayhi salam, and everyone on earth will accept him and love him for the sake of Allah. And that's according to a hadith the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. Umar used to say, الشِّتَاءُ غَنِيمَةُ الْعَابِدِينَ Winter time is the treasure for the worshippers. Why, ya Umar? Why are you describing it like this? Because the day is too short to fast and the time is too long to pray. So you can sleep enough, then you wake up. But the problem is ourselves. Many of us want to wake up by the night time, but we can't. 
a man came to Imam Ahmed to say to him, I prepare my wudu and I sleep healthy and nothing wrong. Then I couldn't wake up for Qiyamul Layl. He said to him, Qayyadatka dhunubuk. Your sins stopped you. Your sins chained you up. What does it mean? Do not disobey him during the day time. He will allow you, he will honor you to wake up during the night time. A man, he bought a slave girl. And during the night time, he heard her saying in her dua, Oh Allah, I ask you by your love to me to do me such and such. He said to her, how dare you say that? Who told you that Allah loves you? She said to him, if it weren't his love to me, he wouldn't allow me to wake up during the night time to pray for him. You got the message? She woke up during the night because Allah loves her. Allah wants her. And to test yourself whether Allah wants you or not, ask ourselves about that. Are we able to wake or not? So this is a good chance to train ourselves in the winter time and to struggle against our desires. So fasting is all of it is good. Voluntary deeds, all of it are good. Doing the dua, all of it are good. And there is another also chance and good opportunity for the brothers and sisters who missed some days in Ramadan. Ashab al-A'dhar, the people of excuses. Whether our brothers who are sick or who were sick during Ramadan and he didn't, they didn't observe fasting of some days. Or our sisters, during their period, they couldn't fast like a couple of days from Ramadan. This is a good opportunity for them. It's a good deal. Literally, it's a good deal for them. In Ramadan, we used to fast like 17 hours. And if she makes it up these days, just short hours. So she can get the chance to observe or make up the fasting that she missed in Ramadan. So whoever tastes the sweetness of ibadah, he will enjoy it during the ibadah itself and whenever he remembers it and after he gets the reward of it. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give all of us the, th the three pleasures of ibadah and make us amongst those who worship him in a way that pleases him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma inna nas'aluka ya arhamar rahimina an tuwafiqana li ta'atika wa an tu'inana alayya. اللهم إنا نسألك يا أرحم الراحمين أن توفقنا لطاعتك وأن تعيننا عليها وأن تتقبلها منا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين ربنا نسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى ربنا نسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى وأن تعفو عنا يا عفو يا كريم ربنا لا تزغ ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا لا تدع لنا في هذا اليوم ذنبا إلا غفرته ولا مريضا إلا شفيته ولا ميتا إلا رحمته ولا حاجة من حوائج الدنيا لك فيها رضا ولنا فيها خير إلا قضيتها ويسرتها برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم